In this video, we're gonna be talking about how to assemble the 3D printed wall clock. The files are available on jbvcreative.com. The link is in the description below. And let's open them up and take a look at what's in the folder. You'll notice in the files, there are a bunch of photos of the full assembly. This is to help you figure out what colors you wanna use. But I do recommend watching through this video to get acquainted with all the parts and how they go together. There's also a bunch of files that are pre-laid out for 200 by 200 millimeter beds. This is to help you just get everything organized. You'll notice that there are two different options for the number rings, and I do recommend printing these in two different colors. This is really easy to achieve through Prusa Slice or Akira. There's videos on YouTube. I've linked to a couple in the description, so check that out. All right, time to get started. So for this build, you will need some additional parts. You can find the full parts list in the description for this video and everything is included in the files. You will need a hammer and a screwdriver and potentially some scissors to cut the thread. So let's start by hammering the bearings into the base. Now I know it's not best practice to hammer bearings, but because the plastic is soft enough, this will actually work. Just don't hammer them too hard. Some of the holes need two bearings. So we're gonna be hammering a bearing on top of another bearing. So we got two bearings in this bottom right hole here. Two bearings go into this leftmost hole. One bearing in the rightmost hole. And then one bearing in the top hole. And again, just make sure you're hammering lightly and they'll just tap right into place. Next, grab your horseshoe shape thing and hammer two bearings into that hole. So now we're gonna add the number rings. So they go in this orientation, this is important. So let's start with the hour ring. You're gonna use M4 by 12 millimeter screws. Screw that into the horseshoe shape thing. Then we're gonna repeat that on the other side with the seconds ring, which is the one with 60 ticks on it. And you'll notice that I'm kind of alternating screwing in each of these screws. It's just to make, make it easier and just make sure everything screws in evenly. Just make sure that the hour and seconds ring are in this orientation. Grab your 18 by 45 compound gear and we're gonna throw an M4 by 20 millimeter screw into the bearing on the horseshoe. Flip it over and throw two washers onto that. Now thread the screw into the gear and try to be really careful to keep the gear as flush to the part as possible so it screws in as perpendicular to the screw as possible. And give it a spin, make sure it's spinning freely. If it doesn't spin freely, it might be a little too tight. Just back off on the screw a little bit and it should spin. Throw an M4 by 20 screw into the center bearing on the base. Throw two washers onto the end of that. And then grab your 88 by 15 gear. That's the one with the big post coming out of the center. And do the same thing as the other gear. Screw it in nice and straight. Give it a spin to make sure that it's not too tight. It should spin freely. Now grab the escapement mount and twist an M4 by 12 millimeter screw into the side hole of that. And stop when the end of the screw is just flush with the inside of the hole and that piece will pop onto the flange around this bearing here. Grab an M4 by 20 millimeter screw and that goes into this bearing here on the base. Throw two washers on the end of that and then the 75 by 11 tooth gear screws into that screw. Give everything a spin to make sure that the gears are smoothly traveling. Grab an M4 by 12 millimeter screw that goes into this bearing here. Use your screwdriver to hold the screw in place so it doesn't fall out and then add two washers to the end of that. Then the escapement goes onto that screw with the gear side down. Give everything a spin, make sure that everything's rotating freely it should be able to spin freely like this. Grab your horseshoe piece, complete with gear, hour ring, second ring, and that fits onto the base and aligns with these holes in the back of the base. 
Now grab three M4 by 20 screws and those go into the holes and screw them in evenly. And you should be able to spin the whole gear train from this small gear. And when you release it, it should keep spinning. That's how you know that it's good. If anything's a little too tight, you might need to just back off on some of the screws. Next, grab your spool and ratchet poles. You're gonna be using three M4 by 12 millimeter screws to screw the spool into the ratchet poles. Once it's nice and tight, grab your thread. You can use a lighter to clean up the end of the thread. That's why I really like this nylon thread. That goes in through the hole on the spool. You can use your screwdriver to help push it through. Pull the other end out from the spool and tie a big knot. I ended up just double knotting on the same knot. Cut off the extra string so it doesn't interfere with the gears. And then you can pull that back through, ensuring that the knot doesn't come through the hole. It helps to wrap the string up around the spool just to make sure it's out of the way for the rest of the assembly process. The spool goes onto the post of the 72 tooth gear. Make sure that the ratchet teeth align with the inside teeth. This is super satisfying, so I recommend giving it a few turns. And then throw this support piece onto the end of that. Grab an M4 by 20 millimeter screw that goes into this bearing. Use your screwdriver to keep it from falling out and then throw a couple washers onto the end of that screw. Now this might be the trickiest step of the process. I use my stomach to hold the screwdriver in place as I put the whole assembly of the spool and the gears onto the end of that screw. And then I screw it in. Make sure that it's tight and straight and then with a little bit of resistance, you should be able to spin the entire gear train from that gear. Grab two more M4 by 20 millimeter screws and that will hold the gear weight support in place. And here you can see I'm once again screwing them evenly together to make sure that everything is aligned. One last check to make sure everything's spinning and we can keep moving forward. A hammer bearing into the crank gear one. Throw an M4 by 12 screw into the back of that and use your screwdriver to hold it into place. Then throw two washers onto the end of that. And that goes onto this post here on the base. Now grab another M4 by 12 millimeter screw that goes into this bearing here. Throw two washers on the end of that and then throw the small crank gear three onto the end of that screw. Make sure it spins freely. Next, grab the cam mount and hammer a bearing into the hole. Throw an M4 by 12 screw into the bottom of it, coming out where the two countersunk holes are. Throw one washer, and this is the only time you're gonna use one washer onto the end of that, and then the minute hand with the gear on it will screw into the end of that screw. Make sure it spins freely and then grab two M4 by 12 millimeter screws, push them right down to the countersinks and then those will screw into the base in the top here. And you can see I'm screwing each screw evenly together to make sure everything is aligned. Hammer a couple bearings into the minute follower. Now grab an M4 by 12 millimeter screw that goes in the front of the follower two washers onto the end of that screw and then line the minute follower up on the base with the dot on the minute hand aligned to the dot on the follower. Screw it into place and then make sure that it's moving freely. You should be able to drop it and it should be able to fall back into that position. Next throw an M4 by 12 millimeter screw into the cam and that will screw onto the hole on the post of the minute gear. It should be tight enough that it moves with the minute gear, but loose enough that you can move it by hand. 
and you'll see everything's working properly if the follower drops to the lowest position when it hits the end of the cam. To add the minute ring, you need two M4 by 20 millimeter screws. Make sure you get the minute ring underneath the minute hand, and then that will screw into the two holes in the bottom of the base. Once again, screwing the screws in evenly. Make sure that the small indent on the minute ring is aligned with the screw head on the cam. That's how you know it's centered. Now grab an M4 by 12 millimeter screw, throw that into the hour hand, and that screws into the top of the hour wheel here. It should be tight that it moves with the hour wheel, but loose enough that you can move the hour hand with your finger. Repeat the same thing for the second hand using another M4 by 12 millimeter screw and make sure that everything moves together nicely. Pop a bearing into the lower hole on the anchor. And with the right paw facing down and the left paw facing across, throw an M4 by 12 millimeter screw into the bearing, flip it over, add two washers to that, and that will screw into this hole on the base. Pop a bearing into the pendulum, hammer it down. And with an M4 by 12 millimeter screw through the back of that, hold it in place with the screwdriver, throw two washers onto the end of that, and then that will screw into the back hole, aligning with the hole on the top of the anchor. Make sure that it's tight enough that everything is secure, but that everything can still freely swing. Throw a bearing into crank gear two. Grab the crank knob, pop it into the crank, and use a C-clamp to hold that in place. And now we can move to the wall. Use a level to make sure that your wall mount guide is straight and mark the holes with pen or a marker. Use whatever wall mounting method you would like here. For me, I just pre-drilled holes and I'm screwing directly into the drywall. This works well and is strong enough to hold the clock up. Screw the wall anchors into the wall using whatever method you want and then the wall posts screw onto those anchors. Pop the clock onto the wall post. And then use your C-clamps to C-clamp the clock onto the posts. Screw the pendulum adjuster onto the pendulum end piece and then throw the weight onto the end of that. Throw an adopter onto the end of that post and build your pendulum just by repeating this process for all the extension pieces. And then you can screw the whole pendulum extension onto the bottom of the pendulum. Grab the end of your string and slide it through the hole in the top of the weight capsule cap. And tie a knot to make sure that it doesn't come off. I'm just tying a simple double knot here, strong enough. Now throw an M4 by 12 screw into the top of the crank gear two. Throw a couple washers onto the end of that and that will screw into this post on the base. Now pop your weight into the capsule, screw the cap on and let it hang slowly so it's not ripping the clock off the wall. To wind up your clock, use the crank and rotate the smallest crank gear clockwise. You can also use the drill adapter to make this process a little bit easier but be careful. And to get the clock going, just give the pendulum a little nudge. To set the hours, just move the hour hand with your finger. Set the minutes, do the same thing with the minute cam. And now we gotta get the clock balanced. So you wanna adjust the escapement mount so that the beats are happening consistently. Here is too far to one side, so we gotta move it to the other side. Now it's too far to the other side and you can see that one beat is happening faster than the other beat. This will take a little bit of patience and a little bit of adjusting, but once you get it right, you're gonna find some consistent beats coming out of the escapement. Once you find a beat that works, you can tighten the screw on the side and that should hold it in place. Next, we have to dial in the period length of the pendulum. So using a stopwatch, you can measure one full rotation of the escapement wheel and see where the second hand is when we get to a full minute on the stopwatch. 
If the wheel is moving too slow, we can speed up the pendulum by moving the weight up using the adjuster. Or if it's too fast, we can move the weight down using the adjuster. And this part is just gonna take a little bit of patience until you get it fully dialed in. And that's the clock. I hope you guys have enjoyed the process of printing and putting this thing together. There is a channel on my Discord dedicated to this clock. So if you have any questions or you need help troubleshooting or anything along those lines, that is the best place to do it. And there's a link to that in the description. Thank you so much for downloading this model and supporting JBV Creative. Happy printing.